So this is a continuation of uh, what I was just talking about there, sort of thing. Uh, I've done one thing about the off the wall Michael Jackson bringing in uh, a story about a, th uh, a girl and you know when I was at school and all that stuff. Secondly, I was in there about what was I talking about in the last one? I can't remember. I've forgotten already. Oh yeah, um, cream cookies and I ITV News at ten with Sandy Gall back in the seventies, and then. Um, um, I was talking about uh, vest, vest, vestibules and recesses and halls and lobbies and that. Not vegetables, but vestibules. Um, but that was another thing. I, um, I don't know if it's an age thing as well, but I'll maybe have to try and uh, put a, a memorandum to, to all my friends and say, listen, do any of you ever remember having mayonnaise when you were young? Because I think that's going to be a, a no, 100% no across the board. I think salad cream uh, sometimes came on the, you know, in the summertime I had salad. I can remember salad cream. It's actually quite, a, I, I, I quite like salad cream. I think I actually prefer salad cream to mayonnaise. But um, mayonnaise is something that seems to have uh, come about much later. And I don't know why it's, um, it came about. And I wonder when and why. But... Um, See, people seem to eat um, loads of it, and I think it's pretty bad for your innards. You ever try to um, wash mayonnaise off a fork or a plate? It's not very good, so that that must be sticking inside your stomach. Um, and uh, you know, you can't actually drink fairy liquid, <coughs> but a cup of boiling water to try and get rid of it. You know, so I don't know how you get rid of it. I'm sure the body gets rid of it eventually, but you know, it's a sticky, gooey mess. But people want it for their, you know with boiled eggs or, or tuna or whatever they do, but uh, yeah, salad cream, definitely much better, but there was no mayonnaise when I was young, definitely not. But uh, I'm up here <clears throat> with a Nissan actually today. I brought the Nissan. Um, I think what was actually in my mind was, um, well, my, uh, the, the year's turning of course, but um, it was in the garage actually getting some some attention. The doctor, the Nissan doctor, I call it. And um, so I picked it up earlier on. But I, I think what was in my mind was the fact that it is the start of the glorious 12th. Well, it's just past 12th of August, was the glorious 12th, you know, for grouse shooting. And, and, and uh, I think if a stray bullet hit my Cleo, it would just come straight through the window. And uh, But this one's got, um, I think it's bulletproof glass. So I think some diplomat must have owned it before me. Um, I think it's bulletproof proof glass, uh, but certainly stronger than the, the Clio glass. I'm, I'm, I'm sure of that. But, um, yeah. And I was thinking about, uh, the, there's, you used to get loads and loads of uh, Land Rovers all parked up on the heather, and Range Rovers and stuff, but loads and loads of beaters and, uh, and uh, you know, Scottish nationals and uh, Italians and Germans and French all milling around the moor, blasting the hell out of uh, everything that flew in the sky. And if you've ever, uh, you've not lived actually until you've been the beating. I went in the beating and uh, I think I've done enough of bloody a lot when I think about it. Because <laughs> that was uh, back in the 80s as well. And um, <laughs> I, didn't mean to, I didn't mean it sounded like uh, aloof there. But uh, certainly, I went up Glen Artney, and um, we got a, a pie, and I had a cup of tea or a kind of kind of export, McCune's export. You either got that or you got. But as I invariably found, the export was always warm, and I didn't really drink at that time it much anyway. And um, yeah, I hardly drunk at all actually when I think it for the, for most of the uh, the eighties, uh, to be truthful. But um, apart from, I think uh, 86 and 87 are probably, like I, I lived, I mean, I've, I've done what I've done and uh, yeah, I'm not going to hark on about alcohol or versus, uh, versus my running, but um, what was I talking about? Aye, and uh, grouse beating, you walk uh, up vertical slopes and down them uh, with a, a big stick with a, a white rag uh, nailed to it shouting at the grouse. Um, 
I mean, simply you're just encouraged in these birds to get uh, killed. It's, you know, you didn't really think about it at that time. But uh, as far as me, as far as I'm concerned, it's, um, it's a, a custom and it's a traditional Scottish sport and people should leave them alone to do what they want to do. It's, it actually brings in a lot of income on many estates across the country. And uh, without these estates, you know, everything would just go to wreck and ruin. I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't actually think of it. A lot of these estates are uh, uh, maintained, you know, the, like just, just simple things like fences and livestock and um, dry stained dikes, all, all the different stuff. And oh, there's a whole list that I could go through, but I'm not going to bother. But um, I'm all, also of, of the opinion that uh, people who, who actually walk on the, the hills regularly, um, you know, have a pretty decent walk, a pretty decent stride about them, you know, and uh, if you start, I, I think I've maybe talked about this before, yeah, I was talking about it people in supermarkets, have I, did I load that? I don't know if I did, um, how they'd walk awkwardly, but on the general observation of people, I mean, if you think about what I'm saying here, you maybe, maybe catch on to what I'm talking about. If you get a caterpillar, um, hundred times out of hundred caterpillars will walk exactly the same, right? Or centipede or whatever you want to call the little thing, or or just about anything in nature walks exactly the same as the as the next one, like a cat or something. You don't really see cats; uh, they all walk pretty much the same. But people walk all differently. People are really weird when it comes to walking. I mean, um, I, mean I think I've got a little bit of a bounce when I walk. Um, sometimes I stoop, sometimes I hold my shoulders up, I don't know. But that should, I mean, that should be a natural thing, you should walk. You've been walking since you were six months old or a year again, or, you know. So, wh why on earth, six months? That's a bit earlier, Andrew, isn't it? Uh, but, you know what I'm trying to say? Uh, you've had all these years of practice to walk, and then what happens is you um, you walk oddly, and I think it's because your body's maybe fed up walking the same way as as you were as a teenager or in your twenties. So it starts to change. It's kind of says, oh, "I'm fed up with this. I'm going to walk differently." And um, so whether it's the muscles and uh, or that, or if it's something to do with your brain, or it's you, you know, consciously. Um, deciding uh, on a given day you're going to walk slightly different and uh, but I mean if someone's maybe sitting sitting on a bench watching you and you maybe pass up a certain spot on a regular basis go, why is he walking differently every single time he passes last week he was walking uh, quite smartly today he used to be walking like he's he's um, lost you know a five pound note or something <clears throat> and I'm just thinking that people who have the that uh, lazy shuffle walk coming down the down the high street, or they or walk too quickly. Nothing more, worse than somebody that walks just too quickly. I mean, that's that's just as off put as somebody that walks too slowly. But uh, <coughs> I clear my throat here. <coughs> I think it's because the heat. Let me get a drink of water. Actually, it is my water. It's down here. And then, can I do this together? Hold the camera on. Oh, I'm just going to have to, hold on. Uh. Actually, just gave me a chance to cut that bit out because of um, that cough would maybe make somebody sick if they're sitting eating their tea. Um, what I thought about I walk in, so there, I just had a drink of water there to clear my throat. But, yeah, people walking, um, why don't you have a, an observation next time you're about, without making it too obvious, obvious of course, but just, just watch people walking. Take a note of how somebody walks, and then the next time you see them, um, go and just see if they're walking exactly the same as they were the last time you saw them, and you'll find that they're not, that they're walking completely differently. Now, I, I, I don't know if it's anything to do with footwear, uh, you know, the shoes they're wearing, or... Or, um, or it's just something like, um, you know, that thing when you're, 
sometimes you're in a good mood and sometimes you're not or sometimes you're tired or sometimes you've got a lot more energy I think it could be the same as walking it's like um, you walk um, between the shops um, sometimes all excitable and uh, you know quite uh, quite sp you know, swift on your uh, your stride and other times you look, you look like you're uh, I don't know that you've just got out of your bed and uh, you wonder what time it is that kind of walk but um, I also think as well about um, am I make this too long probably but I'm also thinking uh, because it's a, it's a time of year but it's been quite warm and you know people like to open the windows and doors to ventilate the house and stuff and um, which is the right thing to do <coughs> however you also open the doors and invite the flies in because they, they, they seem to hang about uh, round about your house um, together and they say I wonder when uh, I wonder when this chap's going to open his back kitchen door well there he is that's him now and then they go straight in your house and I don't like killing insects I think I've mentioned that before there's nothing worse than killing a, a, a defenseless little thing it's about the size of your th your thumbnail or pinky nail and um, can't do anything about it I don't like these blue balls you know these ones that um, they make a, a, a loud buzzing sound and and they actually make me puke just to sound them uh, so I um, tend to usher them out of the house as quickly as possible but those annoying flies, you know the ones that keep on, um, that have got the sixth sense that you, you know, if you've ever, ever whacked a, a, a fly with a tea towel or a rolled up newspaper, those types of flies are, are very, are very clever, they're very intuitive uh, little insects because they, um, they seem to know, know exactly what you're up to and uh, they take evasive action quite quickly. But I think, I think uh, flies, those flies I'm talking about, they're, they're probably the most disobedient uh, insect uh, that we have. Uh, they just do not do what they're told. Um, I asked them very kindly, I said, can you fuck off outside my, uh, my kitchen please? And I'll open the door for them and trying to uh, wish them out. But they seem to end up over beside the cooker or up beside the lampshade or something like that. Um, so the, the, they really are just uh, like uh, disobe disobedient children, not not doing what they're told. Um, but you would never, um, you know, hit your uh, child over the head with a rolled up newspaper or, or flick it in the face with a, you know, a damp tea towel, would you? So uh, I wouldn't do the same to a fly. Just shout, get out. You know, you do that to a child if, uh, if they're really, really um, annoying. Just say, get out or go to your bed. Or as, uh, as we used to get, what was it? If I have to come to you, <laughs> if I have to come to you, or by the Lord Harry, if I come there, eh, you know, and these things stick. It's like I still get that <clears throat> that feeling in my um, my ribs, in my bones that uh, the, 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 the mum's been uh, upset by her behaviour and she's coming to get us. Um, I, I don't know. I mean. It's, it was good growing. I don't think I was a, a naughty child at all. I think I was pretty good. I think uh, as, as far as uh, as far as I was aware, uh, all was all was good as a child. And um, I think my mom says to me, "Yeah, she did." Um, she said one of the nicest things she ever saw in her life. I actually forgot to tell you this yesterday because I continued to speak over about walking and stuff. But uh, as I was saying, one of the nicest things my mum had seen in her life, and uh, she always told me about it, you know, every, every few years she would bring it up in conversation, but she would say to me, like we were children um, down at the, the family home in Creef, and um, I mean, I can, I can just vaguely remember the, in, uh, the incident, um, but my wee sister and myself, that's my, the one that was a year below me, and we were out on the street playing because there wasn't much traffic at that time, to be honest. It was all them, and, and uh, so it was before sc before school had started. I, none of us were, you know, it was uh, not the holidays. It was because we were, we were too young for for primary school. And my recollection of it is showing uh, my sister uh, the beauty of puddles and uh, f floating things on a on a puddle, like leaves and stuff, you see. 
and um, we were approached by this big dog, a very angry dog, and um, it was about the same uh, height as uh, my wee sister, and it was showing its teeth and making a lot of noise and barking, and um, my mum was at the window hearing the commotion, and she said, always said, that um, how I protected my little sister by um, always following the dog round and keep my arms outstretched, making sure my sister wasn't going to get bitten with the dog. And um, she, my mum says that she was uh, reduced to tears when she saw the incident, and she came out the door and chased you know, chased the dog away and stuff herself. But she just thought it was a very beautiful moment. So I think from a very young age I was very protective of people and um, I suppose in, <clears throat> in a certain way I'm, I was quite happy my mum used to share that story because it's maybe something I would have forgotten in life, you know. But there we go.